let's continue. Let's look at a little bit of cadavers here. Looks like a little beef jerky, right? But on the cadavers, uh, the muscles look very similar. Again, they're not hydrated. They don't have a, a good uh, blood supply, so they're going to be uh, a little dry. But they are nice and red um, when they have a vast vascular supply. Remember, they have one of the best blood supplies um, besides bone. So there's your deltoid, pectoralis major. There's the biceps, long head, short head. There's the serratus anterior, external oblique. There's the <coughs> levator scap, rhomboid, minor, rhomboid major. Here's the delts, infraspinatus, Terry's minor right in there, Terry's major. Here's your lats, it's barbecue uh, beef jerky here. Okay, you've had the lateral head, you have the long head, and the medial head would be right in here. Okay. Again, <clears throat> let's look at scapular stabilization. There's four muscles that make up the rotator cuff. They're called the sits muscles. Um, whenever you have some kind of shoulder dysfunction, you can bet that most people have some kind of rotator cuff pathology. Uh, sometimes patients will say, yeah, my rotor cuff, my rotor cuff. No, but it's rotator. Okay, it's the rotator cuff. Okay, tendons of four muscles form the rotator cuff. That's the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. So you have three in the back, one in the front. Um, so again, their origin of supraspinatus is a supraspinous fossa of the scapula inserts on the greater tubercle. Uh, suprascapular nerve is the nerve supply for the infraspinatus, which is right here. It inserts, uh, originates on the infraspinous fossa, inserts in the same place as the supraspinatus, which is the greater tubercle. The teres minor, way down here, originates on the lateral border of the scapula, but again inserts same place, greater tubercle of the humerus. And so there's three different nerve supplies to these. And then also the subscapularis is the anterior one underneath your armpit here, subscapular fossa of the scapula, lesser tubercle of the humerus, and the subscapular nerve. Okay. So those are your four rotator cuff muscles. Look at these. I mean, look at the, the, the force that it puts. Um, I'll show you a video, but they in the video it shows that the pitchers can put throw their shoulder at about 9,000 degrees per second and put about 55 to 90 Newton tons of torque on the elbow. So no wonder they have Tommy John surgery or UCL injuries. Okay. Now, what are the muscles acting on the forearm? Well, you got the brachialis, which is the prime mover of elbow flexion. You've got the biceps brachii that supinates the forearm and flexes both elbow and shoulder. You have the brachioradialis that flexes the elbow. And then you have the antagonist triceps, which will extend the elbow. <clears throat> In order to target the brachialis, you can do curls with your palms down. If you, to, if you want to target the biceps brachii, then do curls and supinate at the very end because the biceps will do a little bit of supination. It also does glenohumeral flexion, so you can add a little bit of flexion at the end to really get the biceps. And the brachioradialis is, are the hammer curls, so you can do the hammer curls to get brachioradialis. Triceps, you can do rope extension, skull crushers, push-ups, diamond push-ups. Again, the brachialis originates in the anterior distal shaft of the humerus, inserts on the cor cor coronoid process and tuberosity of ulna. <clears throat> That's why if you do a pronated uh, curl, then you'll get the brachialis more. And the brachialis will give you that nice definition between your biceps and your triceps. The nerve supply is musculocutaneous nerve. The brachioradialis is the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Uh, inserts on the styloid process. <clears throat> the nerve supply is the radial nerve. And the pronator teres is, originates on the medial epicondyle of the humerus, coronoid process of the ulna, and but inserts on the lateral mid shaft of the radius and causes pronation and is innervated by the median nerve. Here's the supinator. Okay. Sup. So I always say supinator sup. Coordinator teres is down, and you see the crossover that way. Look at these forearms, amazing. So that's extensor digitorum, 
lateral epicondyle of humerus, inserts on the dorsal aspect of phalanges two through five. Nerve supply is the radial nerve. Then you got the flexor carpi ulnaris, medial epicondyle of humerus, pisiform hamate and metacarpal five are the insertion, and the nerve is ulnar nerve. Make sure you also know flexor carpi radialis, um, palmaris longus, and flexors. These are just examples, but be able to identify these muscles on a diagram such as this or a model. Here they are, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi ulnaris, pronator teres. So make sure you can identify all these. Deep to that would be the flexor digitorum superficialis and also the flexor halicis longus. So you got the superficial layer, then you have an intermediate layer, then you have a deep layer, which is the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor pollicis longus. Okay. If you look on the posterior side, those are all your extensors. So extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, You've got the extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor digiti minimi, uh, AAB ductor pollicis lung. These are all named for where they insert and the actions that they do. So, and again, instead of memorizing the names, think about it. extends the wrist on the ulna side, extends the digiti minimi, the, the, your pinky, okay? Extensor digitorum. It's going to extend the entire wrist. So, don't just blatantly memorize words. Think about them and why are they named for what they're doing a b ductor pollicis longus a, a b ducts the thumb now you have intrinsic muscles of the hand like the lumbricals and the opponents remember the opposable thumb is what makes humans humans no other primate can has an opposable thumb like that so we can do fine motor control so you have abductor digiti minimi flexor digiti minimi opponents digiti minimi um a d ductor pollicis okay Abductor pollicis brevis is part of the thenar group, which is right in here. And abductor digiti is part of the hypothenar group, which would be here. So thenar, thumb side, hypothenar, pinky side. Here's the palmar iniaceae. This is the palmar aspect, deep layer. Here's the opponents. Okay. And the palmar iniaceae here. Here's the abductor digiti minimi. This is the dorsal aspect. And then here's all the tendons. Look at that tight fit in here. So if these get inflamed, then you can see why you can have wrist or wrist injuries or wrist pain. Here's a nice little summary of everything. It's not as complicated as it looks. If you think about it, you know all these muscles. So here's the scapula. You got subscap, teres minor, uh, teres major, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, deltoid. So you know that. And the blood supply, I'm um, sorry, the nerve supply. Then you know the traps, lats, levator, rhomboid minor, and rhomboid major on the upper limb to the vertebral column. Upper limb, pec major, pec minor, subclavius. You don't have to know subclavius, but it's underneath the clavicle and the serratus anterior. So you know all these. Um, you know the lumbricals in the hand, inner osseae. Um, if you look at the arm itself, biceps, coracobrachialis, brachialis, and triceps, that's the arm. The forearm, you have the anterior forearm, posterior, and the lateral. The lateral is where the brachioradialis is, extensor carpi radialis longus. Anterior are all your flexors. So flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris. So if you were in the anatomical position, these are the muscles that you would see. And then the extensors are on the posterior side. So in the anatomical position, this would be on the posterior side. All your extensor carpi radialis, extensor digitorum, extensor carpi ulnaris, um, anconius supinator. Abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. So use this as a tool to uh, orient yourself and say, yeah, I know where these are. Again, memorize the ones that I gave you the list for as far as origin, insertion, nerve supply, but then you should know where these are located on a model or on an actual human being, and that will help you tremendously. All right, the end.